This is Echo 3, and let's discuss space shuttles and other bad decisions. So, you've fallen for one of the classic blunders. No, not the one about getting involved in the land war in Asia, but the one about using a space shuttle when lives are on the line. This build is going to start fairly typically, and since this is a shuttle, it will need to be able to carry a payload into space. Here, I'm using the standard 36-ton orange tank as a simulated payload, making sure to secure it in the cargo hold with struts. This craft will have to deal with a lot of misaligned thrust issues, so I'm adding a couple large reaction wheels to help keep the craft stable, and a large battery for good measure. Wing placement is going to be somewhat typical for a shuttle and the big S wings are excellent because they have a high heat tolerance and can hold liquid fuel. This will be helpful later on when I add nerve engines to this craft and use this craft in aero braking maneuvers. A few blocks of RCS thrusters will aid the craft in making transverse movements in orbit. Remember to add a vertical stabilizer and control surfaces to help land this brick. The large control surfaces were more than this craft needed, so I went with the smaller ones to save mass, because mass saved is delta V gained. After finalizing the yaw, pitch, and roll controls, it is time for putting on the landing gear. Placement is a little less critical because they won't be used for takeoff, but still try to make sure they aren't crooked. I'm using the large landing gear in the back and the medium gear in the front because it has steering. Like the US space shuttles, I tried to have the front gear be a little shorter than the back ones. I'm using the vector engine because it is able to gimbal 10 degrees. That will enable a compromise position for the engines. I'm placing the bottom two engines separately from the top so that I can adjust their angles independently of each other. Engine placement and the degree to which they are angled are the major factors for making this craft somewhat stable. The parachutes can help slow this craft down. I ended up needing the drogue chute to help stabilize the craft for landing. For the space part of this shuttle, I am adding the vacuum optimized nerve engines. This craft can store a lot of liquid fuel and these engines will help make use of it. I moved these engines forward but after testing, I think they should have been moved even a little further forward to help keep the craft more stable during re-entry. A canard helps with controlling pitch during landing. I have a mod called RCS Build Aid Continue. It is able to show my wet and dry centers of mass at the same time. It is not crucial, but I find it helpful when building any kind of airplane to know whether I am keeping the craft stable for the entire flight. Now it is time to start putting on the full stack. The hydraulic manifold has a much higher detachment force, so I'll use it to aid in pushing the external tank away from the shuttle. I'll retract the landing gear because I don't need those extended for a vertical launch. After arranging my staging, it is time to build the external fuel tank. In order to keep the center of mass from moving too much, it is best to put the external fuel tank as far forward as possible. Building space shuttles requires lots of adjustments on part placement in order to find a compromise that flies. The fuel line will direct the flow of fuel from the orange tank to the engines. You can enable crossfeed on the decoupler but the delta V calculator seems to work better this way. When the stage reaches zero, I know when it is time to separate the tank. And because this is a lot of mass, I'm adding plenty of struts and auto struts to keep everything in place. I'm checking my staging again and trying to keep my center of mass as in line as possible. I am using the mod Kerbal Engineer Redo and carefully watching the torque reading. I want that number as low as possible. You can do this without mods, of course, but trying to see exactly where the center of thrust line is can be tricky. I am making small adjustments to the vector engines to find the best possible solution. I am also taking out a little fuel from the lower section of the external fuel tank because I have plenty of delta V in the ascent stage. 
I continue to make small tweaks to part placement and to the angle of the vector engines. Designing shuttles is definitely a more complex task compared to most other types of crafts. Now it is time to add the solid rocket boosters. I am putting on the Clydesdale engines. They have some engine gimbal as well, so that will help the craft keep stable during launch. After adding more parts, the center of thrust will need to be checked again. It is extremely hard to overemphasize the need to balance the alignment of the vector engines. The center of mass needs to keep within 10 degrees of the vector engine's center of thrust at all times or this craft will spin out of control. After checking my staging again, I'll add some separatrons to the solid rocket boosters. During testing, there may have been some issues with the boosters breaking a wing when they were decoupled. Val complained about the difficulties of landing with one wing, so management thought we could afford a few separatrons to make the booster separation a little safer. Now, after triple checking the center of thrust, I make sure to add plenty of struts to the solid rocket boosters, enabling advanced tweakables and using auto struts and a horde of regular struts is helpful for keeping a craft like this from flopping around. Now after looking everything over, it's about time to take the Enterprise over to the vertical assembly building for final launch preparations. In the vertical assembly building, I rotate the craft so it is in the proper orientation for launching. Next, I add a couple sets of launch clamps. One set to the orange tanks and another set to the craft itself. I'll look over the staging. I move the launch clamp staging to be the second staging after firing the engines. This will let the engines build up a little bit of power before launching and releasing with the launch clamps. Okay, looks good. Let's launch this thing. This craft is not very easy to control. You can see how much the engines are gimbling to keep the craft on target. The center of mass is shifting the entire time during flight. SAS alone is not enough to keep the craft stable. The Brave pilots worked hard to keep the crazy machine on his flight path. Booster separation can be a little hard on the nerves. As soon as the solid rocket boosters quit firing, the center of thrust changes quite a bit. But after separation, the craft is back on track. The crew aim for a 100 kilometer circular orbit. They ditch the external tank a little early to keep it from ending up as debris in orbit. Once orbit is achieved, the crew release the payload and carefully maneuver out of the way using the RCS thrusters. Now that the craft is 36 tons lighter, it has over 2,000 meters per second of delta V. It is time for a good shakedown cruise around Minimus and back. Minimus is in a good location, so no major inclination changes are needed to get there. The nerve engines are very efficient. It does make for a longer burn, but it means the crew will have plenty of delta V for a safe return trip. After getting an encounter with Minimus, the crew makes a mid-course correction burn to set them up on a free return trajectory. This means that the craft will pass on the front side of Minimus in relation. A tiny maneuver near Minimus will send the craft back to Kerbin. Had the crew tried approaching Minimus from the other side, this maneuver would have taken more Delta V. The Apollo missions used a free return trajectory around the moon. This is one of the reasons why Apollo 13 was even able to return. Zipping past a moon like Minmus is still fun to watch, even after having done it many times. I ended up time warping a little too far and missed my air braking pass on the first orbit, but I was able to get it on the second time. A little aero braking pass will lower the apoapis considerably and save a few hundred meters per second of delta V. Then, after lowering the apoapsis, a slight inclination change and the crew will be able to set up a deorbit burn to aim directly for the Kerbal Space Center. During the re-entry burn, window sticky keys 
got me and stopped the recording. I was able to start the recording back up again, but you end up missing all of that fun plasma effects. Thanks for joining me for Let's Discuss Space Shuttles.